Welcome to the best of both worlds. October 29th. 2004, Madison Square Garden. Fans are waiting for Jay-Z and R. Kelly to take the stage in what's about to go down as one of the most controversial hip-hop concerts in history. When you go back and look at the buzz around this tour, it's hard to imagine that this show ended up with R. Kelly in the hospital and Jay-Z getting sued for $75 million. I'm pulling with the big boy truck, nigga, big boy truck. We be the only big boys that the big boy watch. Go get him, Kelly. It was actually childhood classic and softcore bunny rabbit porno Space Jam that brought these two together. Jay-Z first worked with R. Kelly in 1996 on the Changing Faces track, All My Days. It was a song that was written and produced by R. Kelly for the Space Jam soundtrack. You is my life. Uh -huh. the now we going house shopping. Everybody want to know the price is about strapping. Keep that on the low R. Kelly style, it's quite shocking. Fun fact, Jay-Z also actually ghost wrote the song Buggin' by Bugs Bunny. Who got Bugs Bunny money? I give you some time to get more carrots every time I rhyme. Meek Mill didn't have anything to say about that one. R. Kelly and Jay-Z went on to work together again in 1998 on a track called We Ride from R. Kelly's album, R. Better school that kid on whose shoes that is or who I be, nigga, be I be, but things really heated up for the duo in the year 2000 when Jay-Z appeared on the remix of R. Kelly's smash song, Fiesta, which I can only assume was inspired by his own love of affordable two-door hatchbacks. The year 2000 was a hot year for Jay-Z and R. Kelly because they also linked up on the questionably titled Guilty Until Proven Innocent. Even Aaliyah was filmed dancing to it in 2001. The DJ was hot, played all the records I wanted to hear. I'm the one. So it was the buzz that was generated by the track Fiesta, as well as Guilty Until Proven Innocent, that made R. Kelly and Jay-Z start to think it might be a good business decision if the two dropped a joint album and went on tour together. In 2002, Jay-Z and R. Kelly threw a huge press conference to announce their new joint album and tour, The Best of Both Worlds. Just the idea of having a whole album, myself and R. Kelly, an amazing and prospect. Best of both world tours come to a city near you soon. Definitely. This event was unusually hosted by Johnny Cochran, who I can only assume does some kind of bulk deal on defense cases and public appearances. So this was actually Jay-Z's first experience doing a joint album. And we all know that he went on to have absolutely amazing joint albums with people like Linkin Park, Kanye West, and even his own bloody wife. The duo had initially planned to drop their album in March 2002. Now, unfortunately, the album leaked in February 2002, and to make matters even worse, it turns out that R. Kelly was planning a little leak of his own. R. Kelly breaks his silence. Tonight, the R&B star responds to allegations regarding sex with underage girls. Jay-Z moved pretty quickly to distance himself from this disgusting mess. If he's guilty, I just hope and pray that he get help. If he's mm -hmm. not, I wish mm -hmm. everybody embraced him. I mean, I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I know that. Like, I know I ain't have nothing to do with that. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the alleged incident, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Jay-Z refused to appear in any videos, any tours, and didn't do any promotion for the album. Jay-Z's hardline position on R. Kelly seemed to loosen up pretty considerably within the next year. Jay-Z was more than happy to bring R. Kelly out on his fake retirement tour in 2003 for the Black Album. I just wanna take you Jay-Z was so chuffed with the response that he got when he brought R. Kelly out on the Fade to Black tour that he started to reconsider going on tour with him. I mean, the guy got caught on these child sex allegations in 2002, and by 2003, he's dropping the classic album Chocolate Factory, which went platinum in three weeks. And you can see why. It had Ignition Remix, Step in the Name of Love. I, I haven't had an album do what this album has done. You know, a lot of people out there saying, man, this is your best work yet. One year and one classic album later, Later, Jay-Z decided to open his arms to R. Kelly and secure one of the most questionable bags in hip-hop history. Here's Jay-Z on the radio with R. Kelly, dodging a question about why he's welcomed him back after this scandal. I can understand your reasoning on why y'all didn't promote the last album. Now you have given this man a second chance. This is something that the people want to see, you know what I'm saying? It's 
I don't know what you. I don't know what you. Why would you call it a second chance? The first. The first thing that happened. Life. It comes before entertainment. So at this point, they decide to drop another album together called Unfinished Business, made up of leftover cuts from the first Best of Both Worlds album, and they embark on the original Best of Both Worlds tour together. That tour didn't quite go as it was planned. September 29th, 2004, the first show of the Best of Both Worlds tour takes place in Illinois near R. Kelly's hometown of Chicago. And R. Kelly finishes the show complaining that he thinks that Jay-Z's crew sabotaged his lighting setup to ruin his show. The first night, it was terrible. Due to uh, technical difficulties, we don't believe in bringing a show that's half ad to our fans. September 30th, the next day, R. Kelly is two hours late for their planned show. So the second night, the guy is on the bus. I'm waiting downstairs two hours. And then over the next couple of weeks, everything seems to go to plan. The shows are going fine. October 17th, and Jay-Z leaves a Best of Both Worlds concert early, saying that he has a family emergency. He is later pictured that night at Usher's birthday party. October 23rd in St. Louis, and R. Kelly cuts the Best of Both Worlds show short. It's later reported that R. Kelly actually assaulted the lighting technician on the show, though no charges were pressed. Following this incident, shows in Hartford and Milwaukee were canceled. Hartford is very upset about the fact y'all ain't coming through tonight. Unfortunately, the show got canceled because we have to fix lights, we gotta fix some things that went, that broke down with the tour. It has nothing to do with y'all ain't speaking to each other. Nah, but we're not married, you know what I'm saying? We <laughs> well, I, I didn't say I was married, but y'all two grown ass men. October 26, 2004, we're a few weeks into the tour, and finally, the Unfinished Business album drops and hits number one on the Billboard charts. October 29th, 2004, the famous Madison Square Garden incident. Prior to the show, R. Kelly gets a phone call. Now, he never explicitly states what's on this call, but he suggests that somebody is threatening his life. About 45 minutes into his set, R. Kelly leaves the stage and announces to the audience, Now, I simply told my fans, I think somebody flashed some guns at me. While R. Kelly is cowering in his dressing room, Jay-Z is out on stage, absolutely destroying the crowd. Everybody, you okay? You safe? There's no guns in the building. I really, really tried to hold this thing together. I really tried, I was really patient. Now at this point, R. Kelly goes backstage and he's told that security swept the area and they don't believe that there's any threat and it's safe for him to go back on stage. Some people that were at the event said that R. Kelly wanted to get back out on stage because he was jealous of the response that Jay-Z was getting. If people give me love, he has a problem with that. Like his ego cannot take that. As R. Kelly and his crew are climbing the stairs to get back to the stage, a man called Tai Tai pepper sprays R. Kelly and his entire security team. Now you might have heard of Tai Tai because he's one of Jay-Z's childhood friends and actually has been mentioned on about nine or 10 of Jay-Z's songs over the course of his career. I personally find the fact that R. Kelly got maced quite ironic because it's usually him spraying noxious liquids into people's faces. While R. Kelly was being taken to the hospital, Jay-Z continued to rock the house. He brought out Mary J. Blige, T.I., who performed Rubber Band Man, and he even pulled Usher, who was just there to watch the show, out of the crowd and did a whole bunch of tracks from Confessions. The day after all of this went down, both Jay-Z and R. Kelly call into Angie Martinez on Hot 97 to give each of their sides of the story. You cannot get a gun in Madison Square Garden. Are you crazy? Yeah. Hey, there's rumors that uh, R. Kelly's in the hospital right now. Whatever. First of all, I was threatened earlier. I came anyway. I saw a guy looking real hard at me. Did I ever see a gun? No, I didn't. Did I see somebody just like they had a gun? Twice. He's telling me, you know, it'll be cool. I said, no, it ain't cool unless y'all go find that guy. Going up the stairs, go on stage. This guy sprayed with some pepper spray in my eyes. And I can't get no names who that is right now. Oh, but you know who it is. Yeah. November 1st, 2004. R. Kelly sues Jay-Z for $75 million. Then in January, Jay-Z countersues R. Kelly. Jay-Z actually alludes to this lawsuit on his 2004 remix of Snoop Dogg's Drop It Like It's Hot. It's just saying, homie, you got piss aid. Take it like a man to flow, ran you off the stiss aid. Wasting your time trying to sue us, stop. Tell your lawyer, take that civil case and drop it like it's hot. Jay-Z's countersuit against R. Kelly was eventually dismissed by the judge who allowed the initial lawsuit against Jay-Z by R. Kelly to proceed. And this lawsuit was eventually settled out of court by Jay-Z for an undisclosed Sum. But the real winner in all of this was, of course, Tai Tai. Now, Tai Tai was hit with a charge of third degree assault for the pepper spray incident. But Tai Tai eventually took a plea deal for the lesser charge of disorderly conduct. Tai Tai was actually chosen to be the vice president of AR at Def Jam Records under Jay Z. I personally think that this story just proves one thing sometimes you do just have to pepper spray your way to the top. If you like that video, make sure that you subscribe and like below, hit that notification.
notification bell so you can see every time that I upload a video. And I just wanna say thank you for everybody that's been supporting so far. Anybody that's been liking and commenting, I appreciate it a lot. And I'm looking forward to making a lot of videos for you guys in future. Until then, peace out. Yeah.